Hello folks, how's it going? So welcome to our level One Piece review. This time we're covering manga chapter 1112. And finally, at long last, One Piece is back in the manga. We finally get a new chapter after three weeks of waiting. So that's time to celebrate. And I can honestly say not a whole lot has changed as far as Oda's like, goal of making the ending of Egghead Island as chaotic as, and treacherous as possible as far as the increasing the, the threat level of the Gurusei and like I said before now that you have all five members of the Gurusei it's kind of easy to do considering what we've seen from them thus far and Oda kind of has to at this point considering how obvious he made it we're going to Elbaf so I've said that multiple times but with given the ending of this chapter and how it seems to be easy to go for the Gurusei which gets me to believe there's going to be another twist in the tail. There's going to be another curveball by Oda pretty soon. But I'll get into that by the end. But before I dive into this chapter, I want to give my two cents on the recent episode 1100. Now, I did, I knew they were going to nail the animation and the fight between Luchi and Luffy out of the park. Of course, that, that wasn't a concern. But I did appreciate how they added a level of detail to not only seeing how Luffy activated Gear 5th, especially on Wano, it became instantaneous. Like, we didn't really know. Like, it, it seemed like Oda, Luffy, Oda was going to have Luffy be able to do it at will. And admittedly, that's what we got. And especially how the episode highlighted it. How you see Luffy transition and thinking back to what happened on on Wano, and then that was the trigger for Luffy to cut loose and for Joy Boy to reawaken. I also like how the steam clouds that Luffy has when in Gear 5th, they also vibrated, as in the echo of the sound of Joy Boy. As you see, the pulsation, so that was pretty cool. And you saw the awesome transformation. That The animation knocked that out of the park, so that I appreciate that. I also appreciated how Vegapunk was describing Luffy's form and the fact that the Gumma Gumma no Mi, there's no record of it anywhere in the Devil Fruit wiki. So obviously it's an alias, a cover-up for the Nika Nika model. So And the fact that the Straw Hats are hearing this for the first time, as well as some of the Straw Hats seeing Luffy in Gear 5 for the first time. I like the fact that Nami called back, oh, this is the form you, Luffy used when he kicked Kaido's ass. I, I just love that because it was cool to see all the Straw Hats reaction when Luffy's form has been described as Sun God Nika. So basically he's, he has the form of a God in Gear 5. God only knows if there's going to be another form on top of that. I doubt it, but you never know when it comes to Oda. But that was pretty cool to see. Like I said, the art and animation when it goes to the fight was pretty top notch, I will say. So let's start. Let's get into this chapter, and immediately we got a, we're back on track with the Yamato cover story, and we see Kinemon is talking with Yamato. He's apparently let in Yamato go off to do her own thing, as long as she provides him a favor. Now it's also important to note that Kinemon has given her a gift, so I'm wondering if she's if this is going to be part of his ability to transform. Yamato in some way, shape, or form, because we know Kinemon likes to be a perv, so I don't know. But either way, Yamato's going to go off on her own, so it's cool that she's that Kinemon's given her the blessing to like, do what you want, kind of like Kazuki Odin did. So we get right into this chapter, and immediately the warships are opening fire along with the, the gunfire itself, as well as the pacifistas, and which doesn't last too long because Nasjuro takes down another pacifista, and. But the interesting thing to me is that as the Marines are saying, don't let Jory Bonnie escape. And Nostro's, she's only a 12 year old girl. But he also goes on to add, to give a young girl the power to destroy countries, such a foolish rebellion, Vegapunk. I'll get to that back to the end, because to me, that, that's a sign of foreshadowing to that, considering like, Bonnie's going to have a interesting fight involving Nash Jura, but I'll get back to that shortly. So we see the giants and like we need to get get back to the ship ourselves. We see the destruction throughout all of Egghead Island. So my theory was right on like what was gonna happen with the Vice Admirals with Bonnie there and we didn't and Oda did that by design. Like he didn't show Frankie and he didn't show the giant but they're both still there. 
I also said Sanji could show up to help out too, but I gotta give props. Oda did have Frankie do something, and he took out the Vice Admiral that looks like a Fasco shot, because they both go in, and Frankie takes him out with strong right, so that was pretty epic on Frankie's behalf. I said he kind of needed to do something before this arc wraps up. So from an action standpoint, I'll give Oda that. So he does give Frankie something before we wrap up this arc. Whether or not he does anything from a character standpoint, I don't know. But it's also cool to see that Barney also did a thing. And I, I, I think it's kind of overlooked because of how... How threatening Saturn has been when it comes to Barney, but when you strip that all away, especially with Kizaru as, as well attacking her, and the fact that Barney is still able to fight even after that, is considering what we know about Barney at this stage, is kind of impressive. Nonetheless, she goes in, and apparently one of the Vice Admirals triggered her by saying his dad, her dad was a weapon, so she goes in, she kicks the shit out of one of the Vice Admirals, and then turns him into a child. So that's something we kind of need overlook when it comes to like Barney's ability like so that's pretty epic so so that's where it cuts away so I, I like the fact they gave Frankie something and I like the fact they also gave Barney something so then it cuts to the Labo phase and we see the message that is completely trolling the world right now because I don't know if this message is going to follow through if we're going to get to hear the all important miss the reveal the truth that that he knows he's going to spill to the rest of the world. Keep in mind, the rest of the world are watching this through surveillance than the Mushis. So they know what's going on on Egger Island right now. The other thing is, York has pointed St. Marcus Mars to the exact room where that message was recorded in, but obviously no one's there. So she says it's definitely recorded there, and immediately Mars open fires and tries to blast the room, but it doesn't work because the message is still played. So, and then York goes to proceeds to like tell him exactly that it's like yo chill out because if that's not going to cut it so and um, mars says if i was stella i would definitely hide the streaming transponder snail somewhere else so he already knew that but he blasted the room anyway so is that so he, ha he definitely had a calm mind but then as soon as he saw the room oh open fire so is that the because we see this same thing happening in Saturn. Like he he's slowly losing his humanity in his Zoan form. So it's the same thing happening here, where like his like Mars's instincts as a Zoan is like overtaking his rationality because that's that's what it seemed like. But either way, York says the, gives us a description of the building. So the gas cylinders, which I think is kind of appropriate that she mentions this. On Tower C, floor three, all high pressure gas cylinders are lined up in. If that blows, it'll destroy the whole lab. So York also something, says something in this situation, but he's like, "Of course I'll stop it." So she pulls out a bazooka and look, I'll assist you in taking in take in fact in pointing you to the room so we can take out the message before it reveals what it's not supposed to reveal in the Gorosei's eyes. But York gives a description of the transponder snail of the triangular streaming snail. So. He's got, a, he's got kind of a hint of what to look for. So he's like, show me the entryway. So speak, and you can tell this Odo was like trying to wrap up Lucis because the very next scene is a shot of Stussy and Kaku who we have not seen in a while. Especially Stussy considering, and by the way, she it looks like she was conscious after taking a finger pistol by Rob Lucci. Go figure. But the thing is, it's like the others left and it looks like Stussy, by design, let decided to stay behind to like undo the barrier of the frontier. Do I don't know if that's to let Kaku out of there, or if it's just to let this, the the rest of the crew away. But she says it's going to be my, it's going to I'm going to take responsibility for the fi for this final mission. And apparently Edison is aware about this because the very next scene is him talking about oh. The Frontier Dome, the command room, it can only be t the barrier can only be lifted in the command room. So that's probably where st so that's where they're at right now. So it's lo it's looking like they're going to stay behind on the island unless they find a way to escape. So that that's kind of cool on Stussy's behalf because, like I said, the clone over the original Stussy or the Buckingham Stussy, I should say. 
need to figure out what way to get get to land or at least rendezvous with the rest of the crew. Now, something I brought to light before is like, they're going to use Coupe de Burst, but the thing is, and Robin, who we see in the scene, is finally awake, so that's pretty cool. She also says it's not certain that the Vega Force 1 will be able to fly that, fly at that distance. So, and Edison goes on to confirm, yeah, that's exactly it, because it, I did the simulations and 100% that would crash into the ground. So, but I already said like the Vega Force 1 is not going to play a fight. I've already told you multiple times where this is going. But yeah, they're ruling out the Vega Force 1. But Usopp's like ready for Coupe de Burst. And once Zora and the others get back, we need to get, we need to like rendezvous and get the hell out of Dodge. But Edison seems like he's got something in mind. So immediately he, di he dives down and he said, oh, there's a 78 he does an external external sim like damage simulation it's like 78% which I feel like there's something else that's going to play a factor into this but we get right into the action as Luffy and the and the Giants Dorian Bragi are taking on Top Man right now and it's like Saturn dipped and by the way where the hell is Jupiter where the hell is Jupiter at like, last time we saw him, he was sliced in half, but we know the zones can regenerate, so where is he? I feel like that's going to play a factor at some point. But either way, Top Man is, is turned into a vacuum because he's sucking everything in. Meanwhile, Luffy takes a, takes a chunk of the, a building from the lab and then uses that to launch that towards Top Man as he's, like, sucking everything in. He obviously digests it, but then in this situation, while the Giants are like struggling, and Lu and you see Lu Luffy's expression is he's been sucked to sucked back as well. But he obviously used the building to like stop the suction from continuing. Then immediately, I don't know. So it seems like the energy he received from the food that he got from the vending machine has timed itself out. He reverts from gear fifth back into normal, and obviously into an old man. Doesn't last long because they had Dorian Bragi had emergency food rations from the L bath and they gave it to Luffy conveniently to like recharge. So that's what he does. He doesn't go into gear fifth. However, he does go in to use Red Rock, which is iconic. So he hits Top Man, but apparently hurts himself in this situation. So that was the whole scene was ridiculous. I don't think it tops what he did last chapter where he used the tree and turned it into a baseball bat to like, to, to like knock back poison needles that explode that hit Top Man and Saturn. But apparently Saturn got blown away because he ended up in a completely different area. Speaking of which, we go to Lava Phase and immediately, who show, guess who shows up? Saturn. He's like climbing up the cloud or something. He's like climbing up the the cloud that the sun is on and Nami, Usopp and Chopper are seeing a sign as he's climbing up. So that's not good. That's one blockage in their way. Another is Nash Juro on the northern shore has appeared before Barney, Frankie and Atlas after slicing down a giant from Elbaf. So that's not good. But three of them... The main focus here is going to be what happens with Barney, but obviously I'm not too worried about that. But then Oda decides to leave the ending of this chapter with a cliffhanger, and we see Mars, who's back in his normal form, as he sees the then the Mushi described to him by York, who conveniently is nowhere in this scene. But he approaches it, and then he proceeds to say, Vegapunk uses can't catch a break, as he's about to destroy this dead Mushi snail. And that's how the chapter ends. And it seems like Oda is like portraying things going in the Gorosei's favor right now. Like I said, this reeks of a curveball if ever I've seen it. Because number one, the dialogue spoken, the dialogue mentioned by York. As, so as she pulls out the, the rocket launcher, she literally says, of course I'll stop it if I keep stacking these sins it'll be even harder to hang out with y'all. So, the fact that she said that, I don't know, this, this just reeks of a curveball. I, it cannot be that easy, because if Oda 
has the message streamed to the entire world, cut off like some so nonchalantly and like just that anticlimactic, then what's the point in teasing the fact that Oda is like trying to hint that Vegapunk of him dying? The whole point of this message is like it's a is a death's door, so he's playing this message. So if this message is sort of follow through, then that would, in my eyes, make it off Edgar Allen. Now, Oda has done a pretty good job of making it 50-50, or at least at this point, 70-30% that Vegapunk will survive. But if if it ends, like, you've already teased it, so you, if this doesn't follow through, you're basically clickbaiting not only the people in the world of One Piece, but also the fact also, the fandom in One Piece, and I don't think now's the right time to do that. But I, I don't know. Let me know what you guys think down below. But I, yeah, I definitely smell a swerve coming on here. Uh, a definitely a curveball being thrown. It could be York, but we'll have to wait and see. This another statement made by Nash Juro is the fact that he described Barney's Devil Fruit ability as having the ability to like destroy countries. This immediately to me is like goes back to what Saturn said, and keep in mind this this was in a monologue. So obviously Bonnie wasn't able to hear that, so he, so Bonnie hasn't been influenced by Luffy's abilities at that point in time. That's what this gift that's the vibes that it gives me. So now Nastro is blatantly stating that oh some and T is something that could be considered that could be considered foreshadowing. Either at the conclusion of Eggard Island or going forward. Because there's no reason to say that if it's not going to plan itself out. The, what's the point? So, and especially after Oda's had a break, you think that there's certain things he won't pull the brakes on. The fact that we got Kaku and Stussy included and why we haven't seen Stussy in a while. Like I said, Oda's doing his damnness to make sure things are going the grossest way, but that's not, that's not how things play itself out usually so there's definitely going to be a curveball i think it's going to be york like immediately like pointing mars in the wrong direction to like give the strats time right now obviously Saturn's in in the way of nami usopp and chopper along with their group but considering like sanji who has vegapunk by the way is heading in that in that direction looking to rendezvous with the crew consider we have jimbe and zoro heading in that same direction and we also have and i think it's kind of interesting that Uda used this three-week gap to make make perhaps make some of us forget that the giant mecha robot is in not only in motion but it's also walking and no i still remember because it not only is it walking to a certain direction but it's also referenced joy boy and apologize to joy boy so what else do you attribute that giant mecha role being then to uh, what I've been seeing for like months is like help the strats and the sunny escape Elbaf and I think that's also going to come from Doi and Bragi. Oda's going the long route again which I increase the stakes increase the tension but prophesize with Frankie Barney and Atlas it doesn't look good for him right now if confronted by J Nash Juro I do, f I, I do find it interesting that he referenced to give a young girl a power to destroy countries. Now, is he talking about body's devil through abilities, or is he talking about the sword that Vegapunk handed to Bonnie, even though it didn't really do much against Saturn, but that's the only other thing I can think of at this point, but if it didn't work with Saturn, then what kind of threat of it would it be to Nesturo? But we do see her with the sword. I don't know if that's the same one, but We'll have to wait and see, but I don't see either of those three standing a ghost of a chance right now. Speaking of Zoro, we could get Zoro bumping into Nash Juro, and considering what we, considering we don't know what's going to happen with the Gorosei, I don't expect unless something even more monstrous than them appears on Egghead Island, which I don't think so. Which is why I think York is playing Mars like a fiddle right now because the. The only other twist that can happen in this arc has to come from within the island. It can't come from outside because Oda's preference that Oda has stated we are going to Elbaf this year. So I don't know how much longer he wants to draw this out. So fortunately I don't see the three Atlas Frankie and Bonnie doing something but I could see 
Zoro stepping in, and considering a lot of people want to like connect Last Zoro and Zoro together, like we don't even know if like the sword he has, the sword that Last Zoro has is the Shodai Katetsu. We don't know. Because it's very ambiguous right now. Even in this scene where he sliced down the giant, you can cut. You can't really get a clear picture of it. And considering we have never seen the show architect, so we can't really confirm if he has it or not. But there's just people like throwing head cannon that oh, there's a connection between Zoro and Nash Zoro. If there is, we're gonna find out soon because we don't really know what's gonna happen with the Gurusei. That, that could be a confrontation that happens down the line, or it's gonna happen sooner than we think so there's a lot of different factors to play itself out here so i can't wait to see what Oda does with this like i said like the giant mecha is the, the most obvious logic answer Oda delivers a pretty damn good chapter to come back to so i can't wait to see where it goes like i said i have my theories that we guys think down below do you honestly think there's another swerve coming in and if it if so where do you think it's coming from who do you think that so swerve is coming from because I, I definitely think there's going to be a twist to the tale here before one, at least last one more before we wrap up Egger Island. That's going to do it for that, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Like the review if you didn't thumbs up. I appreciate that. Subscribe to have more One Piece. I appreciate all you guys' support. Catch you guys later. Thanks, guys. Bye.